All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? We are nearing the end of the 2024 NBA season, and I wanted to talk about basically the 2023 rookie class today. I wanna to spend maybe a minute or so on every first round pick. I'm gonna quickly go into the second round, and I'm gonna maybe not talk about like James Najee a ton, but I'd like to talk about Andre Jackson. Um, I'd like to talk about maybe Omari Bailey and Gigi Jackson. Um, but yeah, we're nearing the end of these guys' rookie season. Uh, some have had fantastic rookie years. Some have had disappointing rookie years. Some have been heavily involved into their team's kind of game plans and rotation. And some have just not really been in the rotations um, really whatsoever. So hope you guys did enjoy yesterday's episode where I talked about kind of my top 10 most surprising players, but in a good way this season. And today I wanted to talk about the 2023 draft class. If you guys are enjoying the podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and you're listening right now i'd appreciate you just taking five seconds out to leave a five star rating and review and drop a follow over there and i'd really appreciate it and if you're watching on youtube feel free to drop a thumbs up on the video subscribe if you're not already like i'm getting like some of these videos are getting like 10 12 14 000 views and we are still only at 2,000 subscribers so hit that subscribe button stay here a little bit and you guys are going to get content NBA commentary basically three times a week on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis. So um, yeah, we can hop right into this. The first player we are obviously going to talk about is Victor Wembanyama. I mean, there's so much you could say about him this year in his age 19 and 20 year old season. He's already a top 25 player in the NBA. He's had an elite enough rookie season where he's going to be maybe a top 15 player in the league next year which is crazy to say in year number two. He's going to win rookie of the year. He got off to a little bit of a slower start. I mean, playing at the power forward position to start off the year at times. And then his three-point shot was very inconsistent, but he has been fantastic over kind of his last like 40-ish games. He's appeared in 66 games this year. Honestly, has stayed way healthier than I thought he may have. He's going to finish with pretty much 70 games on the year. 21 points, leading the league in blocks with three and a half a night. He is an alien with a ball -like, or guard like handle he can dunk the ball from like eight feet from the rim he can back down anybody and he is a elite rim protector and just somebody that like offenses are scared of like they will not drive at him yes you have your trace jackson davises of the world that will try it but most players are like hesitating going at Wemby because of the defensive presence he has there he's gonna finish runner up in rookie of the or excuse me defensive player of the year to Rudy Gobert most likely but he's gonna be the favorite to win deep point next year in his age 21 season like a top three deep point finish at, as a 20 year old is insane he's a solid playmaker gets a steal and a half a night as well and he's shooting 47 percent from the field on 16 shots and not even playing 30 minutes a night like if we looked at his per 36 this year in his rookie season he'd be averaging 26 points 13 rebounds, 4.2 blocks a night. He's also taking a ton of threes, five and a half as a rookie, shooting 32% from three. If he works on that in the offseason and could shoot 34% from three next year, man, he there's a good chance he could average 25 and 12 and four assists a night and probably still three and a half blocks, maybe four again. So uh, yeah, Wemby's obviously a freaking stud. There's a chance he finishes top 10 in MVP voting next year. Obviously, I wanted to talk a little bit more about Wemby than some of these other guys but he is so much fun to watch like any night like he is one of the more entertaining players in this league and he's definitely going to accelerate this rebuild of the san antonio spurs and i'm sure they're hoping that this is the last year rebuilding and they can land good enough prospects maybe make a trade or it's not a free agent in the offseason and be at least in playing tournament contention next year so brandon miller has been pretty much the third best rookie this year he was the second overall pick we're not going to talk about chad Holmgren in this video because he's not from the 2023 draft class um so uh, brandon miller i think was in debate pretty much we all remember was in debate to go number two overall with scoot henderson the hornets ended up going for the um six nine wing out of alabama and this has been a home run pick for charlotte like it's been another horrible year for charlotte but brandon miller has been a bright spot um 68 games this year he started 62 of them he's uh playing around 32 minutes a night 17 points four and a half rebounds two and a half assists about a steal a night is shooting 44 percent from the field on good volume 14 and a half shots a night and 37 percent from three on six and a half attempts a night he's a good free throw shooter he's got a good handle he's got a good pull-up jumper and like i said this is a very shitty situation in charlotte so hopefully next year they could be a little bit more respectable i mean miller will be in his sophomore season hopefully he doesn't see a sophomore slump you'll have lamella ball back they'll have another top 10 pick a little bit more cap space in the offseason as well since they moved on from gordon hayward 
Terry Rozier, P.J. Washington, um, and I'm hoping this team is a little bit more competitive next year, like I said about San Antonio. It will be a big year for Brandon Miller, because if he stays relatively the same and the efficiency drops off a little bit, it'll be a little scary, um, but I think he's fine. He looks so smooth with the ball in his hands, and he tries a ton on defense. So hopefully this Hornets team is a little bit more respectable next year, and could, we can watch Brandon Miller play some meaningful games, but he's been a joy to watch in his rookie year on a very, very like uninspiring team in charlotte uh scoot henderson man uh, he was my second ranked player in the class and i still think he will be fine long term i not liked the way chauncey billups has handled his development i know he had a minus 58 plus minus against miami um last week and i think he's got like a minus 57 plus minus on the year which is a team stat it's not really an individual stat but obviously scoot has not been fantastic this year in his rookie season he's a 19 year old point guard inefficiencies are going to be a thing it was a thing with De'Aaron fox um, it's been a thing with like younger point guards when they come into the league. You can go through every draft class. It happens. Um, obviously, like there's their outliers. Like you've had like Lamelo rookie years to guards. Um, you've had your Luca and Trey Young rookie years. But um, for every one of those, like there's a deer and fox. There's um, even like going back to the 2019 draft class, like Darius Garland had a very rough time getting acclimated to the NBA. Um, even Cade Cunningham in his rookie season when he started off, like it happens with younger guards. Um, and Scoot's been in and out of the starting lineup this year, shooting 38% from the field, 30% from three. But I like the playmaking. I think it's actually been kind of good this year. And I think he's pretty like well off for someone that's 19 years old. Uh, the free throws look pretty good. So I think he's going to be a fine three-point shooter eventually. I just hope he starts all 82 games or at least every single game he is healthy next year. I do not want to see Malcolm Brogdon either on this roster or starting next year, Chauncey Billups. Let's move on from him and let's give Scoot the keys in 2025. All right, first of the Thompson twins, Amen Thompson didn't really be, or like he wasn't really involved in the rotation to start off the year. He's appeared in around 21 minutes a night. And I think he's one of the best defenders at his age, like in the league. He's 21 years old and he is a kind of athletic freak on the defensive end of the floor. Um, the jumper has not looked good this year whatsoever, but he's an efficient at the rim score. He's a great rebounder. And like I said, a phenomenal defender already. So I would like to see him. I don't know if we're going to see him as like the starting point guard next year with Fred Van Vliet on this team. And I do wonder how good his playmaking ability is going to be because I think it's been hit or miss this year at times, but the defense alone is going to earn him a spot um, playing decent amount of minutes in this Rockets rotation. And I'm sure Emo Doka just loves coaching this dude on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, it will be a big year for him. Uh, we'll see if he's non-existent from downtown. We'll see if he's starting, like I said, or if Fred VanVoot will still start over him. I'd assume I mean, Thompson's still probably going to come off the bench next year, which is fine. Let's just see him go from 21 minutes a night to 26, 27. Next up, we have the other Thompson twin, Asura Thompson, who got off to a great start this year, was a rebounding freak, also a defensive freak, like his brother, Amen Thompson, his twin brother. And I think Asura is still a better defender. Like I talked about how good of a defender Amen Thompson is. Asura is, I think, even better right now. He also has problems with his jumper. It's not looked good from downtown this year. He's been taking a little bit of uh, less threes as of late, which is good. He needs to work on that in the offseason. But I love this dude's defense. I love his rebounding ability. Um, and he's been in such a poor environment in Detroit this year. I think it's a positive rookie season for Asura Thompson. Uh, he does need to work on that jumper. Can we maybe see him shoot high 20s, low 30s next year from three? That would be fantastic, but that would be a noticeable jump. Um, but e either way, I think he's somebody that can compete for an all defensive team um, spot in his second season. That's how good of a defender he is. And hopefully he's playing in some more meaningful games as well. Cause I feel bad. Cause it's been a dumpster fire situation that he got drafted into. I wasn't a huge fan of Anthony Black at sixth. Originally, he has shown some flashes in the limited playing time he's had this year. He's actually started 33 games, which I didn't think he was going to start that many this year, just because I thought that Markel Fultz was going to finally break out and maybe be the long-term answer at point guard for Orlando, and Anthony Black was going to be a backup, but Anthony Black has good potential. He was basically drafted as a 19-year-old. Um, he played most of the season as a 19-year-old. He recently turned 20, I think back in... February or somewhere around there. Um, we'll see how good the shot is going to look um, in glimpses in, in a very small sample size. It's looked fine this year. Um, I don't love how, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really like confident that he's going to be like a really good shooter in this league, but I think it could be solid enough where the playmaking should be there. Um, and his athleticism will be good enough to be the starting point guard, most likely full time next year in Orlando. We'll see if they add some shooting in the off season. We'll see if they had some starting caliber shooting. Like, if they had a Buddy Heald, I don't think he's going to start over Suggs or Black. But if they added a Malik Monk or a Clay Thompson, yeah, I'll probably start over one of those guys. Um, but Anthony Black uh, showed some signs this year. 
looks like a plus defender and that's obviously what they're trying to build in Orlando and I thought this was going to be a heavy G League season for Bal Koulibaly that has not been the case he's out for the year with the wrist injury but it finished with um 63 games he started 15 of them played 27 minutes a night shout out to Bilal man as a 19 year old eight and a half points four rebounds a night two assists, shot 44% from the field, and 35% from three. I thought this was a pretty good year for Bilal Koulibaly. I saw the potential on both ends of the floor, and I'm excited about his future in Washington. Another poor situation this year, and hopefully next year it's a little bit better. I hope they don't draft a wing in this upcoming class because they already have so many as it is with Denny of Dia, Kyle Kuzma, Corey Kispert, and obviously Bilal, who I'd like to see play 30 plus minutes a night next year. So, and like, we'll see if Jordan Poole's going to be giving uh, notable minutes, and he probably will because of the money he's making. So, I hope they don't draft a wing and they continue to develop Bilal because this was a very encouraging rookie year for him. Darius Walker, though, a very disappointing rookie season, mainly on ownership or not ownership, like management, like Rick Carlisle, the, the front office, just up and down from the um, G League. It's just like, I don't know. I think they've done a horrible job with Darius Walker's development in his rookie year. Somebody that I thought was one of the more ready NBA players um, in the top 10. And he had a good game against the, I think it was the Chicago Bulls, where he had like double digit points. He had a great plus minus, looked like an active guy on the boards and looked like somebody that could be a true rotational piece. And then the next game, he played like nine minutes and just didn't play whatsoever. And it's just the constant like inconsistent playing time for Jairus Walker that I think has not helped his development whatsoever. He had a really good game against like Sacramento earlier in the year and then he's just out of the rotation basically in the next game. Like what is up with that against Portland as well? There may be some things that I don't know about coming out of Pacers camp but I think it's been a very poor job of uh, handling his development in his rookie season. Now you assume he should get more playing time next year like Jalen Smith or Isaiah Jackson could be gone. Um, like Jalen Smith could get money elsewhere. Obi Toppin, most likely gone. And he could be the full backup to uh, Pascal Siakam. But yeah, I just wanted to see more from Jairus Walker in his rookie year. I still think he will be fine long term, as long as the Pacers play him more. Someone that didn't play like too much as I would have liked at the start of the year. He's been playing a little bit more as of late. And that's Taylor Hendricks, who I liked a ton coming out of UCF. He definitely got a little bit too much hype leading up to the draft because everyone's like, oh my God, he's a 3 and D power forward. He's going to be a lead on both ends of the floor. We do have to give it time. He's still just 20 years old. He played at UCF when they were in the American. They weren't even in the uh, the Big 12 yet. And with like the Olympic trade, we've been seeing more playing time for Hendricks. He's been playing like almost 30 plus minutes a night over his last couple of games. And he's active on the boards. He is looking as a great rim protector, um, or at least a defensive presence inside. And he's somebody that I think could still be a good score. The three-point shot has been falling a little bit as of late. Um, like he looked great against Sacramento watching that game. Um, and that, that was definitely probably his best rookie game all year. So as long as Hendricks ends this year on a high note with this increase in playing time, I'm going to be very excited about his sophomore year, but he's definitely trending in the right direction after not getting really too much playing time to start the year. Jason Wallace, um, also somebody wasn't going to be asked to do too much because this Thunder team is one of the best in the NBA, but Wallace has played a decent amount of minutes this year around 20 a night on average and he's been very efficient with his limited shots but hey he's hitting them he's shooting 50 percent from the field 43 percent from three on three threes a night hey that's pretty good 76 percent from the line but he's been a fantastic off the bench on ball defender for okc basically everything that you could have asked for as a complimentary guy in his rookie year and he's still just 20 years old so it's looking like sam presti did a great job trading up to get him in this first round and he's somebody that could play meaningful minutes in the playoffs like basically every team we talked about like i'm just noticing this now he's like the first guy that's going to play meaningful minutes in the playoffs there'll be some rookies here that i'll maybe highlight that will play meaningful minutes but case wallace out of anybody in this top 10 is the only guy that's going to be on a playoff team um because I don't think Jairus Walker is going to play for the Pacers that much in the playoffs. Um, and and I, I, I lied because Anthony Black's going to be on a playoff team. Okay, maybe maybe take that back. <laughs> um, and Anthony Black may get some decent minutes in the playoffs. But we'll see. But Casey Wallace is obviously a little bit more important to like one of the best teams in the league right now. I didn't like the pick when it happened. And he hasn't really done anything in his rookie season. Been up and down with the G League. I know they just recently recalled him. And that's Jed Howard. They even used like a 2K picture on Twitter to recall him. Um, yeah, I thought it was a little bit of a reach originally for Jed Howard. And I, I saw the appeal with his outside shot. And that could be a thing for Orlando, but hey, Orlando's going to be adding another first round pick. Could they be adding some shooting there? Could it be a Dalton Connect? Could it be a Jared McCain? Could they sign those guys, like I mentioned before, like a Buddy Heald, a Clay Thompson, or Malik Monk in free agency? Because they will have cap space. So I'm a little worried about Jed Howard's playing time next year. If he didn't get some run time this year, but we'll see. There's still encouragements with his um, outside shot that could still be effective um, off ball 
playing on this Magic team. We'll see how he looks on the defensive end of the floor as well. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't a huge fan of him coming out of Michigan. I'm not going to say I'm right. He's still just 20 years old. We got to at least give him a couple years. For Derek Lively on the Dallas Mavericks, exceeding rookie expectations. Someone that's been playing so many minutes for them this year, and he's been dealing with a leg injury as of late. But before the Daniel Gafford trade, this guy was playing like 30 plus minutes a night. Uh, his minutes have scaled back since they acquired Gafford, which I'm okay with. I'm not saying it's like stumping his development, but I do think they were relying on him a little bit too much like around the trade deadline i'm like at the end of january he played like 40 minutes against orlando in a big win um and then obviously since the gaffer trade has been playing more like 24 min minutes a night which i think is good you don't want to overrun him in his rookie year because he's a tall dude you don't want to throw a lot on the knees um, and you're going to need him for the playoffs. And like a lot of these guys, he's still just 20 years old. But Derek Lively is going to make an all-rookie first team. He's been a great center pick for the Dallas Mavericks and will be part of their rotation for years to come. So shout out to Dallas. Even like trading down to get off of the Bertans contract and taking Derek Lively, who's been a beast for them. It's a great pick so far. Grady Dick for the Toronto Raptors came in at the 13th overall pick. Did not really play much to start his season. And when he was, he was not shooting the ball well, uh, what, well whatsoever. Excuse me there, just not being able to talk. Um, but Grady Dick over his last, I would say, like 20-ish games, just kind of like dating back, I would say, to the middle of February, has looked great in catch and shoots. He's looked great off the dribble, off screens. He's been shooting 39% from three on five attempts a night over his last 22 games. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any playmaking, any like physical rebounding in there. Um, I don't think he's looked great on the defensive end of the floor either. That could just be me maybe not evaluating him well enough. You Raptors fans can let me know if you feel the same on that end of the floor. But he does look like he's going to be an effective complimentary offensive piece hopefully do Emmanuel quickly you get to see more run with them next year with Scotty Barnes with RJ Barrett and maybe we'll see if they end up with their first round pick in the shift if not they'll have the Pacers first rounder as well uh, but Grady Dick I think has had a fine rookie season and it's much better than like what Jed Howard has been so if you want to compare him to that and the last pick of the lottery was Jordan Hawkins who has been somewhat inconsistent this season um for the New Orleans Pelicans at least with this shooting I mean he's shooting 37 percent from three on good volume so Hey, two thumbs up there. He's been providing, I think, uh, a net positive on the defensive end of the floor. At least it feels like when I'm watching him. But I think what we've seen from these guys in the back end of the lottery, like a Grady Dick, uh, even what we think Jed Howard can be, um, like what Kaysen Wallace and Derek Lively is, he's a, I think he's going to project to be a good complimentary role player. Now, Hawkins is a little bit older than those guys. He's going to be 22 very soon when a lot of the guys I just talked about in the top 10 are 19, 20. Um, so I think... Hawkins' ceiling is definitely lower than some of these guys. Like, I think Grady Dick has a higher ceiling as a, an overall player in this league. But I think Hawkins can be a good, at least, like, role player for this Pelicans team where he doesn't need to be a top guy. They have um, Zion Williamson, Brendan Ingram. He doesn't need to be the top defender. They have Herb Jones. He doesn't need to be the top shooter on the team. They have Trey Murphy. He could just be, like, a little bit of both provide some net positive defense, provide some above average efficiency from downtown, and just know when to take his shots and know when to make the extra pass. And it's going to be a solid pick for the Pelicans, who are going to add some other picks in this upcoming draft as well, maybe with some big man with Valanciunas being a free agent. Oh, I love the Kobe Bufkin pick. I mean, I, I didn't really love the fit in Atlanta. I actually kind of hated it. Um, I, I loved him as a player out of Michigan. He was a top 10 player for me in this class. He goes to Atlanta at 15. And I'm like, oh, they have... Trey Young, they have DeJounte Murray, they have so many guards, um, at least if you count like Bogdan Bogdanovich at the two and AJ Griffin, and we just haven't really seen him at all this year. I know he's had a couple injuries. We've seen him just appear in 10 games. Um, there's been some okay games. There's been some bad ones. Um, he had a good game against Brooklyn. I remember watching that one where he had some good playmaking, knocked down some threes, but we, we just saw him kind of come back from the injury um, and we saw him play like 17 minutes a night. I don't know. I just not enough really, I think, to watch from Kobe Bufkin this year. I haven't really watched him too much in the G League. I'm hoping he is a lot more involved next year because Quinn Schneider just really hasn't played him at all in his rookie year. Not a great, not a good year for some of these young guys besides Jalen Johnson and Atlanta, like a Kung Wu's injuries, AJ Griffin out of the rotation and Kobe Bufkin not really getting too much run in his rookie season. Deontay George though has been pretty good for the Utah Jazz this year. Probably will end up on all rookie second team or close to it has shown some great playmaking ability i did not expect this with him coming out of baylor he's been a nice kind of point guard for them after they moved on from like the tht experiment at least as him as like the guy there um because i remember at baylor like he showed some flashes of passing but i'm pretty sure he averaged like under three assists a night um and his field goal percentage was not great i mean he's kind of putting up what he did at baylor like 
sub 40% field goal shooting, solid three-point shooting. It's at 33%, but I think this shot looks good enough where it's going to be fine going forward. Like I said with Scoob, like rookie guards, like it's not going to be great out of the way. He's still just 20 years old, but I like the playmaking. I did not expect that out of Baylor. So that is a very encouraging sign to see him doing this for Utah this year. And I wonder if he is the starting point guard next year. Will they draft one? Will they trade for one? Who knows? But Keontae George looks like he could be the starting point guard for the Jazz in 2025, which is pretty dope. I did not expect that. I'm excited about Taylor Hendricks and him going into year two. For Jalen Ochefino, it has not been a good year for him on the Lakers. They passed up on Jaime Jaquez and Cam Whitmore, two guys that could have helped them right away, even Brandon Pojemski as well to take Ochefino, who I wasn't a big fan of coming out of Indiana. I thought there were some shot creation things. I didn't know if he was going to be a good enough playmaker. The shot, I felt like, was also pretty inconsistent at Indiana at times as well, where I was not a big fan. There is a potential play here, and he's still just 20 years old, and when you get drafted by the Lakers, you're asked to do a lot, or you're the spotlight's on you, and it's very, it's a high pressured situation and with the Lakers like goal of I guess winning a championship this year it, it wasn't going to be great I mean he's out for the year with a back injury he didn't appear in much and he didn't look good in the 21 games he appeared in this season so we're going to call it a wash hopefully he's fully healthy next year who I don't know LeBron might not be on this team and there's a lot less pressure with this team but I hope the Lakers give him time to develop let him run that second unit and don't ask him to do too much right away because I know they're trying to win it all but I don't think he as a prospect was like made to do that right away but I mean Jaime Jaquez has been a freaking stud this year for the Miami Heat I did not have a top 20 grade on Jaime Jaquez. I thought, I mean, like, all right, I don't want to say that Jaime Jaquez, like, is a complete stud, but he's pretty good. He's 22 years old, though, so we've seen this before. Like, we've seen this from, like, Chris Dorte. We've seen these, like, from some other guys as well, but Jaquez is doing this on a good team, and I think he's going to be better than Chris Dorte. I was just kind of going over the 2021 draft recently, and I know Dorte was older coming out of Oregon when he went to the Pacers, had a good rookie year and peaked there. Could I think that Hawkins could peak in his rookie season? I don't know. Like, would his numbers look this good with Tyler Hero into the fold, with Rozier here for the full year? I wouldn't be surprised if his numbers stayed relatively the same next year, but um, because I don't know about the three-point shot, the shot creation has looked like it's been a little bit inconsistent over the second half of the year, but this is a home run of a pick still. He's going to play meaningful minutes for the Heat in the playoffs, and I'm very excited, and I'm, um, they made the right pick here. I think I mocked, like, Whitmore, or I didn't mock Whitmore, but I was like, take Whitmore here, take Whitmore here, and maybe that was the right pick in hindsight because Whitmore does look very solid who we'll get to obviously in a couple picks but Hawkins looks like a home run pick for the heat there I wouldn't have taken him taken him at um at 18 when he went but that's why I'm not um the GM of the Miami Heat or I'm not in a front office so good pick by them I do wonder about Hawkins next year if he's going to take a big jump as like a 23 year old going into his age 24 season. Brandon Pozemski, I loved a ton coming out of Santa Clara. Spent some time at Illinois as well. He was a transfer. Santa Clara, like a rebounding beast. Like this is why I love like Devin Carter from Providence in this upcoming draft. But I love Pozemski a ton. He's going to be a great role player for this Warriors team for years to come. Uh, home run pick, good three point shooter, fantastic floater. I really love his floater inside and him going off one foot. Um, he's got good playmaking ability. Like I said, a fantastic rebounder for somebody at 6'5. 21 years old, great value at 19, and I think he'll continue to get better for this team. Cam Whitmore went 20 to the Houston Rockets. We didn't see him really to start off the year. Obviously, this Rockets team had a lot of depth, and they made some big free agency signings with Van Vliet, with Dylan Brooks, and with Jock Wandale. But when Cam Whitmore plays, man, it's some efficient scoring. He's a good three-point shooter. Uh, I don't know about the playmaking ability. Like, I, I wonder if the playmaking ability will come ever. <laughs> I, I don't know because we didn't see the playmaking ability at uh, Nova. We haven't really seen it at all this year. He's a strict buckets guy, tunnel vision, uh, not really making the extra pass sometimes, but at least he's efficient with the ball in his hands. Um, in 18 minutes a night, he's averaging 12 points, 46 from the field, 36 from three. He's going to appear in around 45 games as a rookie. Good enough stats to make an all-rookie team. I just don't know if 45 games is enough. Um, he averaged under assists per game at Nova. <laughs> <laughs> and he's averaging, I think, under assist a game or even, yeah, he's averaging 0.5 assists per game um, in 18 minutes. What would his per 36 assists per game be? It would be at one assist per 36 minutes. Yeah, he's got to work on that in year two. I like Noah Clowney coming out of um, Alabama. I thought he was going to be somewhat effective this year. And with all the injuries to Nets and um, disappointments, I don't know. I thought we'd see a little bit more runtime. He has been playing a little bit more as of late. I think he will get more playing time next year. Hopefully they just, I don't know, move on from Ben Simmons, trade away Dorian Finney-Smith. Um, we'll see if Nick Claxton's back. I think we could see a big um, year from Daron Sharp if he's the starter next year. Um, but I think 
think Noah Conley, like in the limited time I've seen him this year, has looked fine. I don't think he looks too lost on the defensive side of the floor. He's also doing this with like, I'm, I mean, the Nets haven't really had a good point guard this year. Um, now it's Dennis Schroeder who's been fine, but um, I'm excited for Conley in year two. It's a big year for him if he's going to take a step, and I hope he gets more playing time and is playing more than 10 minutes a night. We've only seen him appear in 17 games. For Derek Whitehead, just basically injuries this year, which is a shame. We saw the injuries at Duke, and it's kind of carried over into his rookie year. He was pretty much out for the year with a shin injury. Thought he could be somebody that could be a nice spot up shooter for them right away this year um and we'll see if it comes into effect next year he was one of the best shooters coming into this class um especially like his spot up shooting at duke so we'll see how he looks next year with the nets hopefully like noah Clowney, just has more playing time can get more shots up than we maybe would have expected from him in his rookie season. Chris Murray also, I don't think has done a great job in his rookie year. I'm probably going to put that on Chauncey Billups. I don't think he's done him any favors this year. I don't like these half court sets at all. I feel like they're just not properly using him and that maybe they're treating him too much like Keegan Murray and not how he played at um, Iowa. Um, I don't know. Uh, hopefully we see more playing time from him next year, but the Blazers may have two lottery picks. If the Warriors don't make the playoffs, um, you hope you're going to get a fully healthy Shaden Sharp next year. You still have Simons, Scoot. I mean, Grant is making a lot of money. Aiden's making a lot of money. Brogdon, Time Order still on the roster. I don't know if we're going to see more opportunity for Chris Murray next year in his age 24 season. So I'm a little bit worried about his development in this league. But I, I think if there's a new head coach in Portland, that could help it out. We didn't really see a lot from Olivier Maxson's Prosper from the um, from the Mavericks this year. He was coming out of uh, Marquette. I, I I feel like he played a little bit at Clemson, right? Yeah, his freshman year was at Clemson. Um, and then was kind of like, I think similar to like Osei Ugadoro or Tristan De Silva this year. Um, kind of like a rim runner. He showed a little bit of force spacing in college, but we just haven't seen him a lot this year. He's appeared in a couple games. I think he, uh, it's 35 games. Yeah, seven and a half minutes per game. Just not really like it's kind of tough to find him out there like he's playing in the final like games over lineups so throw him out there like the rockets beat the the mavericks by 18 and he plays like the final two minutes or whatever it is or, or stuff like that so i don't know we really haven't seen a lot from omp this year he's 21 years old i wonder if he'll have a role next year as well but i don't know looks like an interesting pick from the mavericks so far and they traded up for that pick too with the kings on to marcus sasser for the pistons like i mentioned with the sword thompson has been drafted into a horrible situation they traded up in the first round to get sasser and i like him a ton i think he's been phenomenal i had a first round grade on him coming out of houston he's a good defender a solid playmaker and he can knock down threes he's a little bit on the older side yes he's 23 years old because he was a he was a senior at Houston, but he is somebody that I think continue or can continue to be a playmaker, shooter, tough defender off the bench for Houston, uh, or excuse me, for Detroit. And I, I like this pick a ton. I think he has been a top 15 rookie in this class this year. I didn't really love the Ben Shepard pick to the Pacers at the end of the first round. I had a mid second round grade on him coming out of Belmont. Um, I think there like is the four spacing ability there, um, but he's a little bit older. He's going to be 23 next year. And I think with the Pacers team, uh, they don't have their first round pick. They're going to bring back Siakam, you would think. Um, and obviously, Halliburton's getting a lot of run. They moved on from Heald, so maybe we are going to see a little bit more run from Ben Shepard next year. Has appeared in a ton of games and has been playing more as of late, which is nice. And his, the shot looks good. It just hasn't been falling a little bit for him this season. And I think he will be a solid rotational piece. Um, but I don't know if he'll ever be like a consistent starter for them going forward based off this rookie year. But hey, it's just his rookie year. Who knows? Maybe injuries are going to happen a ton next year. He's going to get more playing time and he's really going to take advantage of it. I love Nick Smith a ton coming out of Arkansas. I thought this was a steal for the um, Hornets this late in the draft. I don't know. I liked his playmaking ability last year. Um, and not his playmaking ability. I guess like... I don't know. I thought he was going to be somewhat of a nice combo guard. Like he was going to be a good enough three-point shooter. And I thought the passing was going to take a step this year. I don't really think it's improved. Um, his three-point shot or his three-point shot has looked phenomenal this year. I think for a rookie, like you take this for somebody that's still just 19 years old. And Nick Smith was like a top 10 prospect coming into to last year in the beginning of the year and did not play like all that well at Arkansas. That's what dropped his stock. And that's why he went at the end of the first round. But the shot looks great. I don't think he's going to be a point guard in this league. It's more of a two and he has the size of a two. And I would like for him to try a little bit harder on the defensive end of the four because I think he could be a very valuable 3D guy for the Hornets going forward. I am not selling my stock whatsoever. I'm excited about Nick Smith in his second season though. We didn't really see a lot from Bryce Sensabaugh in his rookie year. He played well, like uh, bouncing up and down from the G League. He did have a good game um, the other night though against the Kings, which is very encouraging. Uh, now that they moved on from Oshie Ogbaji, hopefully like they've done with Hendricks lately, we see more time from Bryce Sensabaugh at the end of the year. He's dealt with injuries as well like he had injuries coming out of 
um, Ohio State beginning of the year at times, and he's still just 20 years old. Could still be a nice combo score, like or um, combo forward off the bench for them. He's 6'6", six, six, could play the two, the three, or the four. And the jumper has looked good. So I'm excited about Sensabaugh. Look, uh, watching him through the rest of this season and what he's going to look like in year two. The second to last pick in the first round was Julian Strother um, out of Gonzaga, went to the Denver Nuggets. I was a little bit shocked when this pick happened. Um, his shot has not looked great this season whatsoever, but I think he's a project play similar to like what Zeke Naji was for them, similar to like what Peyton Watson was for them. And not everybody's going to be a Christian Brown. We'll see if he's going to be playing notable minutes in the playoffs. I don't really expect it to happen, but I think Strother has high enough basketball IQ where he's going to be a valuable rotational piece for the Nuggets next year. I didn't really love the Kobe Brown pick either at number 30. Um, he was a little bit older coming out of Mizzou. I thought he was like a weird positional fit. We haven't really seen him at all in his rookie year either. I mean, the Clippers could lose some guys in free agency, but I assume Harden's back. I still think Paul George is going to be back. I don't know if he's going to be the one that's going to be taking a step um, in that front court position because he's too, I think, small and not like lanky enough to be the five. I don't think his four spacing is going to be good enough to be like a three. Um, or the handle either, but we'll see. I mean, he did have a good enough shot last year at Missouri where he could uh, still be a knockdown stretch four for them. And then kind of just looking around here in the second round, I'll just kind of go through a couple guys that I really liked watching this year. I wish we got to see more Leonard Miller. I still like him a ton, and I hope he's involved a lot in the um, Timberwolves rotation next year. Loved him a ton out of the... Um, out of the G League Ignite, I thought he should have been like a top 20 pick. I, I definitely remember mocking him to like the Heat at 18 or the Rockets at 20 at times or even the Nets at 21 um, or 22 for my uh, mocks last year. I loved Colby Jones a ton coming out of um, Xavier. Um, obviously with Monk and Barnes and Murray and Herter and... Um, some of those guys there, he was not going to get like ample playing time. Uh, he hasn't really been playing much this year, but at least he's up on the active roster and he's not in the G League, which I guess is a positive sign. Andre Jackson showed great defensive potential out of the gate from UConn, um, and he's kind of been out of the rotation as well. Um, I thought he got off to a good start this year, but I feel like they just haven't prioritized his development. It's been a weird year for the Milwaukee Bucks for sure. Um, so hopefully we see a little bit more playing time from him in year number two. Uh, a player I loved out of Pepperdine was Maxwell Lewis. I thought the Lakers got a steal in the second round. Haven't really seen much from him this year. And I wonder if he's going to even be involved going forward. I mean, it's tough with these second round picks to get run right away on semi-good teams. And that's what the Lakers are. Two guys I want to see more from next year, City Sissoko and Ryan Repair. I liked Ryan Repair a ton coming over from France. Um, and we've been seeing him play a little bit more for the Blazers. And I see the potential in him. Um, so I'm glad that he's at least going to get some playing time and opportunity towards the end of this regular season. Um, City Sissoko, I'm surprised we didn't see that much. Maybe he's just not ready. And the Spurs obviously know that and be obviously better than me. But I thought he was going to be um, a little bit more impactful for a pretty poor Spurs team this year because I didn't think the Spurs were going to be good. So I thought Sissoko would have been a little bit more involved. Gigi Jackson has exceeded expectations for me. Um, in my top 10 surprising players uh, pod yesterday, you guys know, I did not think he should have declared. I thought he should have stayed another year. Um, I thought he was maybe going to get drafted, maybe not. He goes 45th to the Grizzlies. I'm sure both parties thought that this is going to be like a development year for him. Spent a lot of time in the G League. The Grizzlies have had a season from hell, so many injuries, and Gigi Jackson has made an opportunity with his playing time. And he looks like a good shooter, correct enough score, and I think has the defensive potential as he's still just 19 years old. He was 18 for some parts of this year. So shout out to Gigi Jackson, man. And that was a great pick there. Um, funny enough, I think Amani Bates maybe still has potential in this league. He looked good in the summer league. Um, we've seen him a little bit this year. Like he was kind of fun to watch against Miami in that blowout loss. I don't know. I think he could still be a rotational guy in this league, um, which is funny enough, like his career trajectory from being like so hyped up in high school and then going to um, Memphis, it just not, or going to Michigan State, decommitting, not working out, and then going to Eastern Michigan and still getting drafted last year. He was the 49th overall pick. Um, Tumani Kamara, could not say I watched any of him at Dayton. Um, so when I like, I heard his name on draft, and I was like, oh, who? And the defense is fun. The defense is fun. He's got an inside touch, I think, which is kind of nice. Good feel for the game. And I think he's going to be in this rotation next year. It's funny enough because he's probably been the best rookie out of Repair, Murray, and Scoot for this for this Blazers team. Uh, he was, I believe, drafted by the Suns, though, and then was in that Nurkic Aiden trade. Uh, but yeah, Kamara should definitely be in this rotation next year, 100%. Um, and then a guy that I had a first round grade on or a borderline first round grade on was Trace Jackson Davis, and he went 57th to the Warriors, and he's been, I think, good enough to make an all-rookie team. 
for sure. Uh, like elite inside score efficiency wise, good enough defender and a good ball handler, physical rebounder. Uh, I think the playmaking is there and he's playing meaningful minutes for a team that is a fringe playing tournament team right now uh, on the Golden State Warriors. So yeah, that is just going to be it for me. Hope you guys did enjoy. I kind of wanted to quickly run through the 2023 draft class there. I'm not sure how long this is going to come out just because I kind of talked about each player. I didn't really time it. So I hope this wasn't too short, but maybe um, I don't think it was going to be too long. Definitely not longer than any of my other things as of late, but I wanted to hit like a quick minute on every first round pick and kind of talk about guys that I really haven't talked about a ton because they haven't really played a lot. Um, like I haven't really talked about Jed Howard a ton this year. I haven't talked about Jalen Hochefino. Haven't really talked about Dariq Whitehead or OMP um, this year or Kobe Brown at all. So it was fun to talk about that. If you guys have any thoughts and opinions, on this 2023 draft class, let me know in the comments. Um, and if you're listening on Apple Pod or Spotify, you guys can let me know on Twitter. And yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys for the return of Five Things Friday this Friday. We can talk about five topics. May also throw a mailbag in there. So if you guys um, are subscribed on YouTube, you'll see the community post. I'll be like, give me some questions for Five Things Friday mailbag. Let me know and I'll probably do like three to five questions for that. So hope you guys did enjoy. I love you guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.